everyone, my name is Faith Brower, and for my German culture project, I decided to do it on the famous German-Danish painter Emil Nolde. A little bit about Emil, he was born on August 7th, 1867, originally as Emil Hansen in Nolde, Denmark. At the age of 17, he began to apprentice as a woodworker and worked in a furniture factory. And it was during his time um, as a woodworker that he really started to develop a knack for um, art and started to get a little bit more into the artistic endeavors. Um, during his time as a journeyman or a gazelle, he also attended a school for the applied arts. At the school, he took several figure drawing classes, and this also continued to pique his interest and drive him toward a career in art. Um, after his father's death, he became a teacher of specialized industrial drawing and modeling, and he taught at the St. Gallen Museum for Indu of Industrial Arts in St. Gallen, Switzerland. Um, it was during this time as a teacher that he started to develop his first series of paintings, which was Die Bergpostkarten, or the Mountain Postcards. This series lasted from 1890, or 1894 to 1897, and these paintings were sold as postcards, hence the name The Mountain Postcards, and allowed Emil Nolde to make enough money to quit his teaching job and begin his career as a freelance artist. The magazine Jugend, or Youth, printed around 100,000 cards, and they all sold out almost immediately. His most famous postcard, pictured left, is the Matterhorn Smiles, and this one specifically in the series sold the most. In 1898, he applied to the Munich Academy, but his application was turned down. For a brief period, he attended Friedrich Schier's painting school and then transferred to the Hosel School in Dachau. He remained in Dachau until 1899 when he traveled to Paris to attend the Academy Julian. Um, he also studied privately at the Louvre and started to get more into different kinds of painting. In 1902, he married a Dutch actress named Ada Wilstrup and dropped his last name of Hansen, instead taking the name Nolde after the town he was born in. Um, now we're going to start to look at a few of his paintings. So this was one of his first oil-based paintings, and this is called Springtime in a Room, and this was painted in 1904, and it depicts his wife, Ada, sitting in their, ho in their home in the um, Isle of Alls, and in this painting, we can see that he uses a lot of very bright colors, which wasn't exactly very common at the time. And uh, we're starting to see just the beginning of his endeavors and uh, touching into expressionalism. He was very inspired by Vincent van Gogh, which we can see a little bit in this painting just because of the use of color and how the um, brush strokes are laid on the canvas. Um, Die Brücke, or The Bridge, was an artistic expressionist or expressionistin um, movement founded in Dresden in 1905. So it was founded by Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, Erich Heckel, Karl Schmidt Rotloff, and Fritz Beil. Um, Emil Nolde was later invited to join in 1906. And this was strongly influenced by want to express emotional responses with a new kind of force and intensity using these bright colors and kind of harsh brush strokes to kind of put forth what they wanted to say. And this was really a response to the development and, urbaniz and or or urbanizierung in European cities. Um, and Nolde popular popularized printmaking as an art form within the group. And this ties back to his woodworking past because he would carve the paintings into wood and then stamp them. Um, this movement was around until about 1913 when the group dissolved. And shortly after Nolde left Brücke, uh, he began to study watercolor. And Emil Nolde left the group in 1907, only being there for a year. Um, so now we kind of see different art from this group. So the one on the far left is Kaup, and that's by Il, um, Emil Nolde. The one in the middle is St. Francis, and that is by Karl Schmidt Ratloff. And then the one on the far right is Interior with Nude Man and Woman, and that's by Ernest Ludwig Kirchner. And we can see here that it uses either a lot of bright colors and these kind of like very fun lines, or the one in the middle, St. Francis, kind of shows black and white, but the lines are very harsh. And the one on the left 
um, by Emil Nolda also uses kind of these bright colors, but also harsh lines. And these just kind of are meant to express different kinds of emotion and the brush strokes and all those hadn't really been used before. So these are just early showing of expressionism taking root in Europe. So now back to what we we're talking about with the um, different kinds of woodworking and prints that um, Emil Nolde used to do. So these are two of his prints from 1906 while he was part of Dubruka. Um, the one on the left is Ada, and that is a painting of his wife, or that is a etching of his wife that he then covered in ink and stamped. And the next one is Stein, and that is another um, depiction of a woman that was originally on wood and then he stamped onto the paper. Here's another example of his drawings from 1908, just after he left the, um, the bridge. And this is titled Girl in Washing, and it depicts a woman washing her clothes. And we can see here um, a lot of very unique artistic choices. Once again, with the bright colors, kind of the harsh strokes, everything looks like it's almost melting together. And that just shows another kind of expressionalist view of just making the world as colorful as you want and as like lucid as you want. It doesn't need to follow a specific pattern because it's what you want. Um, so the Berlin Succession or the Berliner Succession um, was an artistic group and Emil Nolde was involved in that group and from um, 1908 to 1910. And um, this group was started by artists who rejected traditional art or traditionale or traditionelle Kunst, and this was directly in um, in a argument against the Association of Berlin Artists because they felt like they accepted traditional art too much and they needed to completely go against them. So that's what this group was. Um, Nolda ended up leaving this group with several others after he was excluded from being part of the um, Secession's exhibits. And he became a very big critic of Max Lieberman, uh, who was the leader of the Berlin Succession, after he rejected his expressionist art. So now we get to one of um, Nolde's most famous pieces, which is The Life of Christ, or Lieben Christi. And this is from 1911. And this painting is well, I should call it the series of paintings because there are nine that are technically make up this one painting. And it depicts the life of Christ from his birth to his crucifixion to them him rising again. And this painting really connects with Nolde's fascination with the Bible, which can be seen a lot throughout his career. He studied it quite a bit and he would paint uh, scenes from the Bible and he became very famous for that and for his like interpretations of the Bible. And this piece is no exception. It's one of his most popular pieces for this reason. And kind of you can see in this one the stark choice of color and the pe the figures don't exactly make a lot of sense because some of them are like taller than others. The proportions are off, but it doesn't matter because it was what he was feeling and it's the way he's expressing this story, which brings us back to his expressionist beliefs. From 1912, we have his another painting of his, which is the Candle Dancers, or the Kirtzintanzer. And this depicts um, kind of another side of Nolde's artistic endeavors. So after he left the Berlin succession, um, he started painting a lot of scenes of the German nightlife. And as you can see here, there are two nude women, or two topless women dancing. And um, he really did like to draw a lot of people dancing and kind of these fun movements. And he liked to get creative with the color, which we can also see here. So this is one of um, Emil Nolde's next paintings, which is Tribesmen from New Guinea, or Stammes Angehörige aus Neuguinea. And this was painted in 1915. So in 1913, Emil Nolde was invited to accompany the medical demographic German New Guinea expedition to study the people in German-controlled New Guinea. And this is one of the paintings of the tribesmen that he did while he was there. And this was kind of a very impactful point in his life because he started to look into different cultures and started to get a little bit into primitivism, which is um, a style of painting that really revolves around painting what people considered to be back then primitive people. And this made up a little bit of a majority of his paintings at this time. 
So going on to his later life, um, Emil Nolde um, moved to Zibel in um, 1927, and he would build a home there that would later become the Nolde Museum. Um, Nolde was a known Nazi sympathizer, um, but was turned away from the party due to their view of his art. And this is one of the more controversial things about Emil Nolde's past is his connection with the Nazi party. Um, but the Nazis considered all modern art um, as degenerate, and 33 of Nolde's paintings were included in the Degenerate Art Exhibition in 1937, or the Aus Ausstellung Antarctica Kunst. Um, during the same year, over a thousand of Nolde's paintings were removed from German museums, and he actually became one of the most confiscated um, painters in Germany, meaning that the Nazis took more of his paintings than they did of any other artist in Germany. Um, in 1941, the Nazis barred him from painting, but he still continued to paint in watercolor in secret. These watercolor paintings in different landscapes made up the majority of his artwork until his death in 1956. And this series, um, from 1941 until his death, is considered the unpainted pictures. And ironically, they were used as a symbol of rebellion against the Nazis, considering that he kept painting even though he was told not to. Um, here are a few examples. We have in the upper left, we have um, some of the flowers that he painted in watercolor. And then we have two sunsets that are also done in watercolor. And here you can still see his expressionist roots with the very bright colors mixing with the dark colors and just the stark difference between all the shades that kind of draws your attention. Um, Emil Nolde's legacy or Vermachtnis. So Emil Nolde is considered to be one of the fathers of expressionism. His use of bright color in his oil paintings as well as his watercolor really set him apart from other artists at the time. A lot of artists to this day are still inspired by his works, and that's what really sets him apart from other artists and why his influence is still felt in modern art today. His drastic change from the way that art was originally conducted and his use of mixed media when it came to the wood carvings that were then pressed down to make paintings and drawings really do set him aside from other artists just because of his creative spark. You see it a lot in modern art where they draw kind of like these gangly figures and they use a lot of bright colors. And Emil Nolde was doing that back in the 20s. And a lot of modern artists can attribute their stylistic choices and their decision to do what they do to Emil Nolde and the ripples that he put in place to then become what expressionism is today. And that's why I think it is so important that people learn about this artist. Thank you.